Okay, let's continue on to section four, security policies, routing context and NAT. Security policies. Okay, everyone. So in section four, we're going to begin discussing security policies. And this is the reason why you put a firewall on the environment. You want to isolate networks and put traffic rules behind each one. So you can know what can go to what, or you can enforce what is allowed to go where. In this case, what is allowed to go from this specific side of the network and what is allowed to go to this other side of the network. And this is why we have firewalls. This is the way that we enforce in and out traffic between different segments on our network. We're going to discuss how can you configure those security policies by adding attributes such as my source traffic. My IP address for the source network, that can be one option. My destination, I am going from my client network to my server network. I don't want to allow every single machine on my network to hit all servers. Maybe I don't need to. And this will provide more security on your environment if you police the network accordingly. So if we have accounting, why does the accounting subnet or the accounting users need to reach the marketing servers, for example? Or why do we need to have users on the guest network able to go basically to every single website? That's why we have a specific rule that we can say, well, guest network, but I am not allowing you to go to to this particular site. And this is why we're actually implementing a firewall. This is the benefit of putting a firewall in our network to limit the access of our end users to a specific resource, either it's on the outside or on the server side or wherever you call it a destination. So let's take a look at that. We're also going to take a look at something very important. It's very, very important that you build that policy table clean. Meaning, you know exactly what are you configuring and what's the purpose and make sure that you can nest objects together so you don't have a long policy table. And the reason why I tell that is we have something on the firewall, an issue that is called overruling, meaning that you might apply a policy to a specific destination, but then somehow you have a policy that is before that policy. And the way that the firewall enforces the traffic, it starts looking top to bottom, meaning first policy, I'm going to check. I am not matching that source or that destination. Then I'm going to check the second one and so forth. So it continues top to down. Problem is, if you have a policy denying a user going to a specific resource, either on the server environment, if there's a policy behind it that actually matches the same destination, it will overrule the one that you're denying. So the user will be able to go to the website or destination, in this case, a server, even though that you have a policy to deny it. So we have to take a look at security overruling, and that's a huge item that we need to discuss as well. Okay, so let's get started. Let's begin taking a look at the security policy tables, and we'll go from there. Okay, let's begin configuring those security policies and let's do it in a way that looks like the real deal. Like, meaning this is a day-to-day -day task for a network security engineer. You got to sign a couple of tickets and we're going to do each one of them and you're going to see how do you configure the policies based on the scenario. Okay, let's begin with ticket one. Please block the student wireless network from reaching the server subnet. I have a source network, the student wireless, and I need to block access to the server subnet from the student wireless, meaning that the students on the wireless network, they should not be able to hit the server subnet. So now we know already the source zone, which in this case is the student wireless, and we also have the source address, 10.10.0.0.22. We also have the destination zone, and we also have the destination address. Okay, with that information, we should be able to configure that policy. Let's go ahead and do it. Let's go ahead and our Palo Alto. We're going to click on policies. We're going to click on security. And here is where you're going to do the magic. By default, the Palo Alto will have two policies. Interzone default and inner zone default. Interzone default, I am allowing, by default, Palo Alto will be allowing traffic as long as all part of the same zone meaning that you have multiple interfaces because you might have the client wireless interface on the Palo Alto where they basically route to the outside and they also have wired client subnet 
interface as well on the same zone. So I can group multiple interfaces and put them on the same zone. That traffic by default will be allowed. So I have a policy here. I am allowing that by default. And I have another one. In this case, it's the inner zone, uh, inner zone traffic. Inner zone default blocks by default. It will deny by default traffic between different zones. If I have you know this will be your day-to-day -day activity to allow traffic because by default it's denied i have to configure a policy to allow traffic between different zones so let's go ahead and configure the first one in this case we'll be with a ticket one we're going to click security we're going to click on add and we're going to create that first rule student let's make a a name that actually relates to the policy let's make something that we know it's going to help us if we need to troubleshoot student wireless deny to servers okay source i am coming from the inside my student wireless is from the inside zone this is where the zone my traffic will be coming from source address i will need to add that student wireless subnet there we'll click on add from the policy rule section i can actually add an address object so if i don't have the student wireless in an address object then i can create it from here and again we cover address objects you want to make sure that you're creating policies using address objects and label them accordingly so you know what they're for click on new address and this name will be student wireless and you can add a description if you want in this case i have everything that i need on the name ip net mask and let's take advantage of that notepad and we're going to copy this line which is 10.10.00/22 go back to the firewall we'll paste it here we'll click ok now we have the source zone inside source address student wireless user i am just blocking the whole subnet so i'm not actually caring about specific users it's the whole subnet destination i am going to the server zone so i have a zone here destination zone it will be the server zone destination address add we're going to create another address object in this case will be the server subnet server and then again let's go ahead and uh, copy and paste select the address right here and then copy it and then let's go ahead and paste click OK. Now I have my destination. In this case is the server subnet. Application. Any application because again I just want to block full access from the student to the servers. Service. Very important. By default the Palo Alto will assign this to be application default. In the application default there's a list of services or ports that are allowed. So in this case it's HTTP, HTTPS, etc. There's a list of ports that are allowed by default on the application default object. Or you can select any. In our case, we need any as our service URL category. I want to block any service regardless of what it is. Okay, so service, application default, very important. On your policies by default, we will have the application default setting on our service side. You want to make sure that you're setting this as any because this means that if the traffic is going, for example, to an HTTP, HTTPS site, that is an application default service port, meaning I will always go to port 80 if I want to go to an HTTP site. So if the source goes to that particular port, by default, the Palo Alto will see, well, that's application default, I'm going to allow it. Or if I'm going 443, which is HTTPS, that is application default, I am going to allow it or deny it. So whatever I'm putting on the actions and will go to the actions, I am allowing or deny. It. In this case, I want to deny absolutely everything. So anything, not just application default, any. Because if I am trying to hit a custom port on the server side, this policy will not match. Because right now on the service, I'm setting this as application default. So if I ma my traffic does not match the destination to be a common or default application port, I am going to allow it. This will not be blocked. So in this case, will be any. Actions, this is the fun part deny and then we're going to log a session start or session end in my case i just want to do a log at session end meaning that once the traffic you know the exchange between the source and destination happen it logs the session to be completed and then you can also send the log external log server or you can schedule policy to execute during a specific time of the day in this case during the weekends i'm going to allow it but i'm going to deny it during the weeks 
So you can create a schedule object to do that. In this case, also, if you want to, the traffic matches this particular type of traffic, then consider this a class of service or quality of service and then apply a mark to it. So once it will get prioritized if you need to. In case we're just going to deny, we're going to click OK. Once we click OK, all we have to do is confirm that we have the deny statement, we have the destination address to be the servers, we have the source, and we have the source zone. And by the way, you can expand this if you want inside student wireless going to destination servers and the action is deny. Once that's done, you just press commit and you should be good to go. Okay, so the first ticket is complete. Let's do the second one. We're getting complaints of employees watching Netflix during work hours and it's causing our internet connection to crawl. Please block the employee subnet 102500-23 from accessing Netflix. Oh, you're going to be the bad guy, but it's your job to block Netflix. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, let's go ahead and configure that policy. Let's click on add. In this case, we're going to say employee subnet deny Netflix. We're going to click source. It's coming from the inside. Source address, I already made my object. In this case, it's employee subnet. Destination. Outside. Destination address, any. We don't know Netflix public IPs, so we can just leave this in any because then I'm matching the traffic against my application object. In this case, I am going to select my application object. In this case, will be Netflix. And I already made a Netflix group because if you remember on our previous video, we discussed that applications, they're dependent upon other application objects. So I made the application group object here. In this case, we'll select Netflix service. I'm going to let this in any, regardless of what service, I just want to block Netflix and that's it. Service URL category, any action. We're going to deny. You see two options, deny and drop. What's the action on deny? Block use app deny action. Drop, silent drop send optional ICMP unreachable. Drop, it means that silently I'm going to drop the traffic. I don't have an action like deny does. And how do you find out what's the, the actual deny action? Let's go ahead and find that out. Let's go ahead and go to the objects, applications, and let's search for Netflix and let's select the base and you can select anything but in this case we'll select the base. Once you select the base on every single application description, object description, you're going to see this deny action. This is what's going to do if you set that as deny. In this case it's going to drop and it's going to reset the session, meaning that the user will need to requery the session but again it will be drop and it will be drop and it will be drop. In case you want to monitor the session, because you want to log that activity, meaning that if you want to log the session, you need to then have a denied action so it can generate that, that drop message. And then based on that, you can block uh, or you can record the session. Let's click on close and let's go back to our policies. The object again, let's make the security, in this case, employee, wireless, employee, subnet, deny Netflix, source, inside, we already covered all this. Employee subnet, destination, I am going to the internet. In this case will be outside. And then this is the application where we select our Netflix application group. If you don't understand application group, I suggest you go and take a look at that video. It will explain why I need to make an application group. And service, we just select any. And I want to record every time that I match the policy. So in this case, I'm just gonna have a deny and then I can have a log to for that particular action. We'll click OK and we should be good. Now we have a second policy which is denying the employee subnet from going to Netflix and this is my Netflix application and you can see the actual application object here. Okay. Okay, so we just finished the first two tickets on our security policy section. In the next video, we're going to configure the two remaining security policies on tickets three and four.